Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Staying on with the social shaping of technology in contradistinction with uh, the technological shaping of society okay, or the technological shaping of technology itself, okay. because STS scholars we always try to look at the dialectical relationship between three forces of production namely science 1, technology 2 and society 3. Okay? because we always believe in the fact that science and technology are not independent systems of thought rather they are a byproduct they are, they are byproducts of society and we have discussed uh, in the context of uh, new york bridge by robert moses we have discussed in the context of uh, the political construal of technological systems we have discussed uh, technology as knowledge now we are going to discuss thomas hughes paper on or reflection on Thomas Elwa Edison and the invention of electric bulb, electric light in the context of history of ideas and the study of problem solving. We all know that uh, uh, Thomas Edison invented uh, electric bulb, electric light, but how he did it in the context of history of ideas and the study of uh, problem solving, uh, solving the real world problems, let us see. Okay. In fact, Thomas Selva Edison uh, invented systems, Insel, Samuel Insel uh, managed systems and Mitchell financed their expense. And these I mean these three systems one is one is related to invention second is related to management third is related to finance okay because whenever we produce something it must have some kind of implications may be social may be economic may be political may be cultural and so on. and these systems were electric light and power and now usually called I mean utility. What is utility? In economics, in basic economics, utility means want satisfying power of a commodity. Okay. Then what is a commodity? A commodity is that which has got exchange value. Okay. In this sense, we are using. Suppose, if I say water in a river may have more use value, but diamond has more exchange value. Okay. In this sense, we are using utility, want satisfying power of a commodity. And Edison invented the system, I mean the, the, the system of electric light that took form as the Paul Street. Uh, generating station of the New York Edison illuminating company. Now, it is known as consolidated Edison company. Insel on the other hand managed electric light and power companies that consolidated into Chicago's uh, Commonwealth uh, Edison uh, company and S. J. Mitchell. Okay. He provided for the growth of large regional power systems. Then in this context, one may say Edison as an uh, inventor entrepreneur, Insel as a manager entrepreneur and Mitchell as a financier entrepreneur. Okay. But, for, for, but 
so far as the this I mean these lectures are concerned we will restrict our purview to Edison as an inventor entrepreneur. Okay. But in uh, but the back background against the uh, against which we are going to discuss Edison as an uh, inventor entrepreneur must involve both Samuel uh, Insel and Mitchell as a manager entrepreneur and a financial entrepreneur respectively. Okay. Let us see how they did and these these three individuals okay these three individuals namely Edison, Insel and Mitchell focused upon one level of the process of technological change such as invention, management or finance, but in order to relate everything to a single central vision they had to reach out beyond their special competences. Mitchell managed, Insel financed and Edison new management and finance. For this reason they should be called Edison as an inventor entrepreneur, Insel as a manager entrepreneur and Mitchell as a financier entrepreneur. Okay? This is very important. Edison, Insel and Mitchell were strong holistic conceptualizers and determined solvers of the problems frustrating the growth of systems. That is why if you look at the, the, the initial point which we started with history of ideas and the study of problem solving, okay, their strong concepts okay, resulted from the need to find organizing principles powerful enough to integrate and give purposeful direction to diverse factors and components. The problems emerged as the system builders strove to fulfill their ultimate visions. Not one of them was satisfied to solve a part of the problem simply to invent or manage or finance. For each believed uh, that the invention would not become an innovation the managerial structure would not evolve and the financial means would not bring growth unless electric light and power were viewed as a coherent system. Okay. Then what is the difference between invention and innovation? People may say that uh, one may say that uh, yeah, both uh, speak of the new things. The, the difference between invention and innovation lies in the fact that in the context of innovation the aspect of marketability, the aspect of industrial utility must be there. In the context of invention, it may not have marketability immediately, but in the context of innovation, it must be new, at the same time it uh, uh, must be non-obvious and it must have industrial utility. Okay? I mean it must go to the market, okay. it must attract more and more consumers. That is how will uh, I mean that is how uh, uh, these three I mean um, Edison, Insel and Mitchell okay, they, they were strong conceptualizers and they determined uh, I mean they, they, they were determined solvers of the problems frustrating the growth of systems. And the strong and their strong concepts resulted from the need to find organizing principles powerful enough to integrate and purposeful direction to de diverse factors and components. Okay? And the problems emerged as the system builders strove to fulfill their ultimate visions. Not one of them, not either uh, even Edison, Insel or Mitchell, not any one of them was satisfied to solve a part of the problem, simply or simply to part of the problem, I mean simply to invent or simply to uh, manage or simply to finance. For each believed that the invention would not become an innovation, the managerial structure would not evolve and the financial means would not bring growth unless electric light and power were viewed as a coherent system. They must constitute a coherent system. I mean invention, management 
as well as finance. Okay. Besides focusing upon systems, directing at, uh, attention to these individuals who presided over their growth, it is imperative to identify stages in the history of electric light and power. That is why whenever we talk about technology, we must be able to reflect on the social history of technology. This is very important. Otherwise, there is no point in studying technology because technology, uh, whenever we talk about technology, is always a socio-technical system. Around 1880, when Edison flourished, electric light and power were clearly in the inventive stage, and he is representative of many other leading inventors like Thomson, Stanley, uh, Tesla. Uh, I mean, uh, Insel rose to prominence about one quarter century later. I mean, in the in the first decade of um, the uh, of the twentieth century, uh, after the technology had been saved, and managing large utilities was uh, an even greater challenge. As a result, the names of utility heads like John Leib, Jaw, uh, and Insel dominate the industry. In the nineteen hundred and twenties. Invention and management remained important, but regional systems financed, organized and managed by holding companies dominated the scene and, and the individuals like Mitchell, Stone, Webster and again Insel were preeminent. But for our purpose, we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss Edison as an inventor entrepreneur. We are, we are not, I mean inventor entrepreneur, Edison as an inventor entrepreneur by keeping the other two, Insel uh, as, as a manager entrepreneur and uh, Mitchell as a financier entrepreneur. Okay? This is very important. Edison, what, what we get to know from his biographies? I mean, what we come to know from his biographers, reflection on Edison's life. Edison was not a simple tinkerer hunting and then trying his way to uh, new inventions. He said that he was no genius of heroic proportions. Invention, he explained interestingly. Um, was 99 percent, 99 percent perspiration and 1 percent inspiration. His more scrupulous and better informed biographers portray him as more than an inventor. They describe his engineering activities as he developed his inventions and his promotional efforts as he brought them into use. His notebooks his notebooks give evidence that his concepts were bold and encompassing. They go beyond the territory of invention. They go beyond the territory of invention. When I say, I mean they, they go to the realms of uh, uh, both management as well as finance. Edison's activities covered the broad spectrum from invention to innovation, I mean market, finance management. Okay? He approached problem solving systematically and his incentive method synthesized three things. Three things. One is technological, second economy and third scientific. In his early days, Edison was content to invent a quadruplex telegraph. A telephone transmitter, I mean that is the receiver was a necessary afterthought for reasons of competition or some other component of a technological system. Someone else, of course, not Edison, not Edison, integrated those components into a commercial system, ready, which was ready for the ultimate consumer, target group, customer based. After Edison moved to Menlo Park to establish his research laboratory in 1876 and when he decided to introduce a system of electric lighting in 1878, his reach was far more extended and sweeping. 
he was ready to preside over the introduction onto the market of a complete system of technology synthesizing components of his own invention. As an inventor entrepreneur, Edison coordinated a team of electricians, mechanics and scientists and cooperated with associates concerned about the financial, political and business problems affecting the technological system as a whole. Okay? After conceiving in general and sweeping terms of a system of incandescent lighting in the fall of 19, 1878, Edison announced his brainchild with a fanfare in the New York Sun on the 20th of October 1878. Always good newspaper copy. He told reporters of plans for underground distribution in mains from centrally located generators in the great cities predicted that his electric light would be brought into private houses and simply substituted for the gas burners at a lower cost and confidently asserted that his central station would furnish light to all houses within a circle of half a mile. He spoke not only for his incandescent lamp, but of other envisaged components of his system such as meters, dynamos and distribution mains. A month earlier, he had written privately of his concept, have struck a bonanza in electric light indefinite subdivision of light. He was in essence sharing his movement of inspiration with associates and readers of the Sun, New York Sun newspaper. He had no generator, no promising incandescent lamp, much less a system of distribution. There were at least, there were at least a year away. Edison, however, had uh, the concept. Let me quote what he said. He said, I have the right principle and I am on the right track, but time, hard work and some good luck are necessary too. It has been just so all, uh, so in all of my inventions. The first step is an intuition and comes with a burst and then difficulties arise. This, this thing gives out and then that. Bugs as such little faults and difficulties are culled, so themselves and months of intense watching, study and labor are requisite before commercial success or failure is certainly reached. But he had the right principle. He was on the right track. From his biographers, what we, what we learn that he, I mean Edison as an inventor entrepreneur, he developed inventions and promotional efforts and brought them in huge. He approached problem solving systematically. I mean the first step is intuition. Okay? Second, uh, I mean with a burst and then difficulties arise. This thing gives out and then that. Okay? I, mean, I mean whenever you look at a particular invention uh -huh. by an inventor entrepreneur namely uh, Edison, okay? it covers the broad spectrum from invention to innovation. I mean his inventive method synthesized all three components as we have already discussed technological, economic and scientific. Okay? His biographers also report that Edison had a general concept of his system in the fall of 1878. For example, Francis Gell who joined Edison uh, as a laboratory assistant in November and who later published reminiscences of the Menlo Park days recalled that in October 1878, 12 months before the construction of a practical incandescent lamp and the announcement of his basic generator design. Let me quote here that Edison had his plans figured out as a great general figures out of out, uh, his battle uh, strategy before his first cannon is fired first rule, first norm is fine. The secret according to Gell 
of his accomplishments lay in his early vision far in advance of realization. Obviously, uh, as, a, as, a, as a determined conceptualizer, Edison conceptualized so audaciously and embarked upon the invention of an entire system because he had a laboratory and staff to draw. He integrated the individuals, I mean he integrated the experts and facilities with his concept just had as he did the technical component. Okay, by synthesizing all these three technological, uh, if you look at this technological, economic and scientific components. Okay. At Menlo Park, there was a hierarchy of systems. His notebook saw that he assigned to his Menlo Park electricians, mechanics and scientists problems associated with the various components of the system. When I say various components, I mean various parts of the general problem. The broad concepts were generally, I mean were, were generally developed by Edison himself as an inventor entrepreneur. Okay. The individuals experimented, the experts experimented and calculated within the rubric of his guidelines. Among those to whom he turned often in the first two years of work on the electric light system were Upton, Jell. Uh, bachelor and uh, Chris. An analysis of the first 200 of the laboratory notebooks, which began in November 1878 and cover the years of 1879 as well as 1880, indicates that Francis Upton figured most often in the experimentations as well as calculations. Francis Upton did a literature search for Edison in the fall of 1878 in New York City before he joined him at Menlo Park. Just before taking up residence there in December, Upton asked if Edison wanted him to continue the search in Boston in the United States of America because the Berlin summary of progress in physics since 1857 and an index to uh, Pogendorf's annulin were there. Edison knew his aspirations to invent a system in a field of technology cultivated by scientists as well as electricians could only be fulfilled if he grew uh, if he drew upon science. Upton reinforced and supplemented Edison in this regard. Edison's systematic approach ignored disciplinary boundaries. That is why whenever we talk about science, technology and society, we do not restrict ourselves to a particular discipline. That is why we when we initiated our discussion in the in the initial lectures that that it is sts science technology and society is a conglomeration of many disciplines we we borrow ideas from philosophy of science history of science sociology of science and so on and edison's systematic approach thus ignored or went beyond disciplinary boundaries today we would say that he was problem not discipline oriented. He was, his approach was problem oriented, not discipline oriented. Upton had come a long way to Menlo Park. Characterized as a scholar and gentleman by his planner, uh, Menlo Park companions, he had studied at Phillips Academy, Andover, Bowdoin College, Princeton University and under uh, Hermann von Helmholtz. Um, at Berlin University in Germany. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, Ross Van or uh, Laurie, Edison's counsel, uh, business and financial advisor recommended him to uh, Edison, knowing of his need for a physicist and mathematician. Jell said that whatever Upton did and worked on was executed in a purely mathematical manner and any wrangler at Oxford would have been delighted to see him juggle with integral and differential calculations, uh, differential equations. Upton often concentrated upon the development of a dynamo for the system. Gel appears frequently in the notebooks in connection with lamp filament investigations. He also came to Edison 
jail also came to edison in november or december of 1878 on the recommendation of lord okay as a as a as as a as a junior scientist as a boy he had read every scientific paper one could find and as a young man he became a great admirer of edison edison's inventions edison's writings edison's uh, research lorry who was general counsel for western union employed jell as an office boy and arranged for him to take an apprentice course in the western union repair shops jell also attended cooper union evenings studying chemistry physics and algebra another member of the electric lighting uh, team was charles bachelor bachelor charles bachelor too filled out the edison system for he was an ingenious master craftsman dexterous and sharp eyed whose wide ranging experimental techniques and mechanical attitude aptitude kept him at edison's uh, right hand bachelor was so intimately involved with edison in all of his works that his absence from the laboratory was invariably a signal for mr edison to suspend labor john crecy who was in charge of the menlo park machine shop also played a major role trained in switzerland as a fine mechanic he could adeptly construct edison's various designs with nothing more than rough sketches and cryptic instructions he like i mean crecy uh, just like bachelor had been with edison in new york new jersey before the establishment of the menlo park laboratory it is very important to understand edison as an inventor entrepreneur is a conglomeration of many other experts many other individuals i don't want to demean edison in any sense but but edison and his electric light must be examined in the context of this this kind of social history of technological systems many others at menlo park were assigned to work on various components of the evolving electric light system okay for example claudius a former officer in the austrian telegraph corps built uh, simulations of the system with batteries for generators fine wires for the distribution system and registers for the load gel reported that uh, Uh, claudius had uh, kirchhoff's laws of conductor networks at his fingertips the names of some other edison pioneers who made it possible for him to invent and develop an in entire system include uh, lawson um, ott uh, um, head hammer um, and so on. okay including boy the availability of this varied talents experts helps explain the encompassing character of uh, edison's concept of a system that's why when we said it is, he invented the system okay or or uh, insel in, uh, managed the system or uh, michel financed the system okay this this kind of invention of that particular system is very much encompassing okay furthermore they were supported by a, uh, they were also supported by a broad array of expensive machine tools chemical apparatuses library resources scientific instruments and electrical equipments in the menlo park laboratory complex a major reason for the establishment of the edison electric light company in october 1878 was to acquire funds for additional laboratory equipment and new workers like upton and jell obviously the common characteristics of edison his experts i mean his the, the kind of very talents that he was associated with okay and the laboratory were set by a systematic demanding ndf at menlo park there was more than a system there was a community as well edison chose menlo park because the isolated rural setting insulated the staff from the uh, distractions of an urban environment like new york edison and other uh, members of the community uh, bought or rented rented 
uh, farm houses in the vicinity often brought his uh, bride to a comfortable house provided with the new edison light others lived at mrs jordan's cozy uh, nicely appointed uh, boarding house located at a short walk from the laboratory compound okay the meals were undoubtedly uh, country and hearty and the environment was well ordered they were there were scores of anecdotes about the character of life in the laboratory okay if one wants to read one can read even laboratory life by bruno latour but that is another thing altogether okay that that which these these there are scores of anecdotes i repeat about the character of life in the laboratory including accounts of late hour breaks after especially arduous days on these occasions the pipe organ at the end of the lab's second floor added to the festive consumption of food and drink since the working day sometimes extended nearly 24 hours it can be assumed that edison was willing to charge the expenses to business the system the community and the style of invention were essentially edisonian few witnesses or historians challenge the conclusion that the organizing genius was edison's yet there was one individual uh, grosvenor lorry who during the early days of the electric light project appears to have closely advised edison on financial and political matters edison laid down the guidelines for bachelor crecy and opton in the laboratory but lorry often guided edison when the problems involved wall street or new york city politicians edison however did not step back immerse himself in technological and scientific problems and leave the the element of politics to lorry the correspondence shows that edison always had a prominent role in the financial and political scenario because of his knowledge of the world of legal business and financial affairs lorry's strengths complemented edison's born in massachusetts uh lorry took up the practice of law in new york city and rose to prominence he acted as counsel to the us express company wells fargo and company and the baltimore and ohio railroad he was also uh, the legal advisor to the financial entrepreneur uh, henry willard in 1866 he became general counsel of the western Uno union telegraph company a position that brought edison and him together in connection with telegraph uh, patent litigation we will we'll discuss patent when we will be discussing ipr regime intellectual property rights regime towards the end of the lec this, the, these lectures lorry was one of those who persuaded edison to turn to electric light light having observed the sensational publicity given to the introduction of the uh, jablokov or cloyd in paris in 1878 lorry uh, urged edison to enter the field and offered to raise the money edison needed to expand menlo park not only did he advised uh, not not only did he advise edison he often encouraged the inventor lorry promised in 1878 that the income from electric lighting patents would be enough to fulfill an edison dream to set you up forever to enable you to build and formally endow a working laboratory such as the world needs and has never seen at the time the only buildings in the menlo park group were the laboratory building the carpenter shop and the carbon shed there were no machine shop library or office buildings shortly forward edison gave lorry a free hand for this purpose in negotiating the sale of forthcoming electric lighting patents and establishing business associations and enterprises at home and abroad let me quote here he, as he said go ahead i shall agree to nothing promise nothing and say nothing to any person leaving the whole matter to you all i want at present is to be provided with funds to push the light rapidly because the inventor as an as an inventor entrepreneur edison wanted uh, the entire united states of america uh, to be under light 24 into 7 even when uh, the sun sets lorry had close contacts with the new york financial and political world his law offices were on the third floor of the 
Drexel Building, Drexel Morgan and Company um, had the first floor working closely with his long time friend Fabri, uh, an Italian financial genius and partner um, Morgan. He obtained the funds for Edison from Drexel Morgan and Company. His skill and effectiveness in dealing with politicians and political problems is conveyed by a Menlo Park episode. In December 1879, Laurie arranged a lobbying extravaganza. The objective was to obtain a franchise allowing the Edison Illuminating Company to lay the distribution system for the first commercial Edison lighting system in New York City. Behind the opposition of some New York City aldermen lay gas light interests and even uh, lamp lighters who might be thrown out of work by the new incandescent uh, light. A special train, a special train brought the mayor alderman to Menlo Park. Behind the opposition of some New York City uh, aldermen lay uh, gas light interests and even lamp lighters who might be thrown out of work by the new incandescent light. A special train brought the mayor aldermen to Menlo Park. In the dusk, they saw the tiny lamps glowing inside and outside the laboratory buildings. After a tour and demonstration by Edison and his staff, someone pointedly complained of uh, being thirsty, which was a signal for the group to be led up to a darkened second floor of the laboratory. Light suddenly went on to disclose a lavish spread from famous uh, Delmonico's lorry presented Edison and the Edison case after dinner. I, I mean, in due time, the franchise was granted. The franchise was uh, as necessary for commercial success as a well working dynamo. Okay. The organization and early management of the companies formed all formed by Lorry and Edison in connection with the electric light system have been well told elsewhere also. Here it is important to emphasize that the pristine character of the companies manifested Edison's determination to create a coherent system and his willingness to preside over the broad spectrum of technological change. The first company formed that is the Edison Electric Light Company was essentially a means of funding Edison's inventive activity and obtaining a return of investment by sell or licensing patents on the system throughout the world. This is very important. The Edison Electric Illuminating Company uh, of New York was a license of the parent Edison Electric Light Company. The Edison Electric uh, Illuminating Company built the first commercial Edison system with its central generating uh, station on Pearl Street in New York City, which was started in September 1882. Because Edison invented and developed all major components for the integrated system. Except the boilers and steam engines, he had also to establish the Edison machine works to build dynamos. The Edison electric tube company to make the underground conductors and the Edison lamp works to turn out incandescent lamps in quantity. He entered into a partnership with uh, Bergman, a former Edison employee in a company to produce various accessories. Not only was Edison the pivotal figure in the companies during the early years, he personally supervised the construction of Pearl Street Station. In these companies, Edison was an engineer uh, and a manager, but the focus and the commitment for him remained invention. That is how he developed inventions and promotional efforts uh, and brought them in use, okay, which could solve the real world problems. Supplemented and uh, complemented by his laboratory staff and by the particular resources of Lorry, Edison solved problems associated with technological change on various levels and in a systematic integrated way. His his systematic approach, okay, his systematic approach to problem solving uh, was most clearly demonstrated, however, in the invention of incandescent uh, light technology. Edison could not conceive of technology as distinct from economics, at least when engaged with the electric light system. After initiating the project, 
he read extensively and deeply about gas lighting from central stations especially with uh, especially the economics of it also he canvassed the potential lighting market in the wall street district in new york where he intended to locate his first central station his notebooks show that he analyzed the cost of operating the grammy and the wall wallace or light generators that he had acquired for rest purpose for test purposes from available literature both edison as well as upton also determined the cost of operating a uh, jablock cough uh, uh, arc lighting system laboratory notes reveal that he was especially concerned about the cost of copper and hoped to reduce it to uh, reduce it in generator and distribution wiring as early as december 1878 uh, edison estimated that the physical plant needed for one incandescent lamp in his system would require capitalization of 11 dollars at that time okay at an interest rate of 10% of this investment and assuming lamp use of 300 hours a year the percent per lamp would have to be more than 366 uh, 3.66 mills per hour edison was clearly thinking within the context of a capitalistic system perusal of edison's notebooks should lay to rest uh, the myth that he was a simple inventor tinkering with gadgets there on page after page are concepts ingenious um, experimentation careful and sustained reasoning reasoning and close economic calculus notebook number 120 what uh, uh, what hughes rai uh, suggests one of his biographers uh, that uh, probably uh, i mean probable date 1880 for example has 30 pages of calculations uh, uh, i mean for example his 30 pages of calculations probably obtains under edison's inst instructions about the costs and income of a central station supplying 10000 lights at that time these were probably in anticipation of the pearl street system to be built in new york city that's why uh, that's why his uh, dream his ambition was to see new york city always within light even after sunset these were probably in anticipation of the pearl street system to be built in new york city by the time the calculations were made edison and upton knew enough from experimentation and literature searches to assume that 1 hp steam engine and dynamo could supply 8 16 cp incandescent lamps therefore they needed about 1200 hp for the 10000 lamp system to house this power plant they estimated an iron structure or building that would cost 8500 uh, us dollars at that time in 1880 using a babcock and wilcox estimate they estimated 30100 US dollars for boilers and auxiliaries crazy predicted that the steam engines and dynamos would cost 50000 US dollars they they were very expensive ex extensive after extensive calculation they estimated 57000 US dollars ultimately if you look at it, it came to almost 1 lakh US dollars 90886 approximately i mean uh, or, or in fact estimated um, minimum income from 10000 uh, installed lamps they calculated at that time more than almost 1.5 lakh um, one and a half lakh uh, us dollars at that time okay this is very important i mean whenever you talk about invention whenever you talk about uh, entrepreneurship you must be able to keep uh, management as well as finance in mind whenever you talk about innovation okay that's why when you switch from invention to innovation you must keep these things in mind calculations like these were as much uh, a part of edison's invention and development of an electric lighting system as his overly publicized and well remembered endeavors to find the lamp filament as a matter of fact the search for the lamp filament was conditioned by cost analysis like uh, uh, the way he calculated edison calculated 
It is known that Edison was determined to discover a high resistance lamp filament in contrast to the low resistance one generally tried before him by inventors of incandescent lamps. It is not widely realized that his determination was a logical deduction from cost analysis. To explain this, we must consider the cost analysis once more and also introduce science. In doing so, we shall demonstrate that Edison's method of invention and development in the case of the electric light system was a blend of economics, technology, especially experimentation and science. In his notebooks, pages of economic calculation are mixed with pages reporting of experimental data and among these one encounters reasoned explication and hypothesis formulation based on science, the web is seamless. His originality and impact lie as much in his synthesis as in his exploitation of the research facilities at or utilization of ex research ex facilities at Menlo Park. Okay. To solve, I mean, I mean, there, there may be, there are, there are many, calc there were many calculations. Okay. To solve the dilemma that the current, uh, but current was needed to uh, light the incandescence. So, how was one to reduce it? I mean, to solve this dilemma, Edison tried to synthesize again the three components technological, economic, and scientific. Okay? Wanting to reduce the current in order to lower conductor losses, Edison realized that he could compensate and maintain the level of energy transfer to the lamps by raising the voltage proportionately. Then he brought Ohm's law into play. Ohm's law is, I mean, resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Okay. It was the Eureka movement for him. I mean, what uh, in Greek philosophy, uh, what we uh, learned that uh, Archimedes used this term. Uh, I mean, Eureka. I have, I have found it. I have invented it. Now I have known it. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, it was the, the, the Eureka movement for he realized that by increasing the resistance of the incandescent lamp filament, he raised the voltage in relationship to the current. Uh, in that case, re resistance was the value of the ratio, ratio between voltage and current. Okay? Hence, his time consuming search for a high resistance filament, but the notable invention was the logical deduction, the filament was a hunt and try affair. While the essence of Edison's reasoning seems clear from the available evidence, what Hughes tried to do, Hughes try, uh, I mean what, what uh, he had to find in his notebooks or elsewhere the date when he realized that a high resistance filament would allow him to achieve the energy consumption desired in the lamp and at the same time keep low the level of energy loss in the conductors and economically small the amount of copper in the conductors. In an essay attributed to Edison and sent to Henry Ford at his request in 1926, Edison stated that in the fall of 1878, he had experimented with carbon filaments, but that the major problem with these was their low resistance. He observed that in a lighting system, the current required to light them in great numbers would necessitate such large copper conductors for mains and so on that the, the investment would be prohibitive and absolutely uncommercial. In other words, an apparently remote consideration, the amount of copper used for conductors was really the commercial crux of the problem. He provided better evidence that about the time of origins of his high resistance concept in stating that about 1800, December 1878 that uh, uh, he was engaged uh, as, uh, as, as, a, as my mathematician, as his mathematician, a young man named uh, Upton, Francis R. Upton. Their figures proved that an electric lamp must have at least 100 ohms resistance to compete commercially with gas. Edison then said that he turned from carbon to va various metals in order to obtain a filament of high resistance continuing along these lines until about April 1879, when he had a platinum um, of great promise because the occluded gases had been driven out of it, thereby increasing its uh, infusibility. 
Edison then established a search for a high resistance filament between between December 1878 and April 1879. Gell in his reminiscences maintains that Edison wanted a high resistance lamp as early as October 1878 and had reached this conclusion by reasoning about his envisaged system of electric lighting. Gell also states that Edison reasoned to the essentials of his system by applying Joules and Ohm's launch. Edison's reasoning can be illustrated with a simple example using approximate rounded off values. By 1880, he obtained a carbonized paper filament with resistance ranging from 130 ohms cold to about 70 to 80 uh, ohms heated. He wanted 100 ohms. De desiring a lamp with candle power equivalent to gas, he found that this filament uh, required in present day units the, the, the equivalent of about 100 watts. This meant that the product of the voltage across the lamp and the current must equal 100 watts. Since the resistance was 100 ohms, the current had to be 1 amp because by Joule's law, the heat energy was equal to the product of the C square and the resistance. I mean, that we we know that what 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 was resistance we discussed? Resistance was is, was equal to voltage divided by current. Okay, I mean, if you if you look at this to to summarize today's lecture, I mean, we started with. Edison and electric light hist in, in terms of the social history of uh, uh, ideas and the social history of technology and the study of pro solving the real world problems. How there was a combination of three systems, I mean invention, management as well as finance. That is why Edison is known as an inventor entrepreneur, Insel as a manager entrepreneur and Mitchell as a financier entrepreneur. Entrepreneur indicates the organizational system building drive of these three geniuses. Edison, Insel and Mitchell were strong holistic conceptualizers and determined solvers of the problems frustrating the growth of systems. Their strong concepts resulted from the need to find organizing principles powerful enough to integrate in purposeful direction to diverse factors and components. What we we learned from his biograph from Edison's biographers that the invention and development of the incandescent light seemed to have been the leading gaze of Edison's systematic approach. After the characteristics of the lamp were established, then the problem of generator design was generally defined. The generator, for instance, had to supply 100 volts for the parallel wired, wired incandescent lights and an amperage equal to the number of lamps times approximately 1 amp. The relationship between the generator and lamps was determined by the decision to wear the lamps in parallel with uh, parallel, uh, which in turn resulted from the need to keep the system voltage at a safe level and to keep possible operation of the lamps independent of one another. The Edison system was evolving like a drama with a cost of developing uh, uh, interacting ideas. In October 1879, the same month in which he found the first practical filament, Edison announced the generator for his system. Other components followed. In September 1882, the Pearl Street system began to supply light for the Wall Street district with the with the opening of the Pearl Street station and of the Edison Electric Illuminating Company, the age of central station incandescent lighting had begun. The modern age of public, uh, thereby you know, we, we, we witnessed the modern age of public uh, electricity supply. I mean that that is how the modern age uh, of public electricity supply had opened. Uh, what, what we found from his biographers that the way Edison as an inventor entrepreneur how he developed inventions and promotional efforts and brought them in huge. He approached problem solving in a systematic manner. Uh, he covered the broad spectrum from innovation, uh, invention to innovation. Uh, I mean, you are you are not trying to uh, uh, create something new, but also you are trying to uh, 
create something new for the market for the consumers uh, from the end for the end users his his incentive method synthesized three components that is the technological the economic and scientific and that's how he said that uh, the kind of uh, according to uh, edison that uh, invention was 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration okay staying on with with the the social shaping of technology in contradistinction with uh, 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 technological shaping of society uh, uh, and technological shaping of technology itself in the lectures to follow we are we are we are going to we are going to provide more examples uh, on social shaping of technology uh, but but the dialectical relationship between uh, uh, technology science and society must be kept alive uh, for the debates to continue because because our real world uh, problems okay they involve controversies if controversies remain then our debates must remain even if we even if for a moment if we think that our control we are, we are done with our controversies but we must debate those controversies we must try to uh, evolve a culture of uh, debating the controversies uh, um, uh, over time and across space okay in the lectures to follow what we are going to do we are going to provide more and more examples on 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 the principle of uh, the social shaping of technology or the methodological canons of the social shaping of technology okay and then uh, i mean before we move on to how science today how scientific knowledge in india today uh, has turned from uh, to, uh, turned into an intellectual property uh, from a public resource we will also discuss reception of modern science in India uh, in the lectures to follow, but before getting into before getting involved in the di critical discussion on science and technology in India, we will provide more examples to substantiate our, our viewpoint our perspective on the relationship between technology science and society I mean I mean our perspective on social shaping of technology. Okay?